You know, as an athlete, I think, you know, whether it's in your space or whether it's outside of your space, you have access to, to, to the best brains on earth, you know, so the best piece of advice I ever got was surround yourself with smart people and ask a lot of questions. You can apply that to me having access to Andre Agassi at a young age and literally I can ask him anything I want. Take advantage of that. Or, you know, you're, something as simple as you're doing a corporate suite visit at the US Open and you run across amazing, amazing business minds, you know, they, they, they're there, they want to see you and take advantage of it. You know, ask them a couple questions, always know what you're going to say uh, and leverage those contacts, follow up. With athletes, it's weird because everyone's coming at you. So you almost, you see a lot of athletes develop this one-way traffic thing where, okay, they'll come to me. I'm the most important person in the room. Let, let that go and, and, and kind of pursue knowledge that you don't have. That's interesting you say that because literally when he came here, he started asking us questions. <laughs> you didn't even wait for us to ask you questions. You're asking us, so tell me, how was it here? How was the flight here? Tell me about your background. You said you were big on uh, studying whatever that was out and you were, you were reading. Were you a big reader of books yourself? Anything. Books, podcasts, basically. There's, there's, I'm, while I'm, you're playing. So you were reading a lot while you were playing? Uh, tennis, you have to realize. That you're either on a flight for nine hours or if you play it, that's a good point. If you play at 10 o'clock at night, you wake up and you have to find something to do all day. I feel like if you're working your brain, it stays kind of sharp. So there's, a, there's so much dead time. The thing I miss the least about retirement is waiting. Someone else's schedule, you know, you, you would play at 10 at night, you're waiting all day long and your nerves and everything else. So if you could distract your mind and, you know, I, I just, I'm a bit of an information junkie. If you could say one book, what would it be? Any book that really stood out? All the Gladwell stuff. I'm reading a book called uh, Originals Good Right book. Right Now. I was a big Tony Robbins guy. Uh, some of it I like, some of it I don't, but that, you know, I, I, it, it's kind of take it for what it's worth. I, I like reading a bunch of different news sites, so you're not only getting one voice. I'll pretty much read anything. Parents always ask me the wrong questions. How long should my kid be playing every day if he wants to be a pro? He's playing four hours right now. I go, if he's not engaged for two of those hours, cut it. Make sure if two and a half hours is his attention span and he's in it and focused, then I think that's probably what you should be doing. And, and try to focus. Tennis is tough. You show up and it's, it's cold one day. That affects the way the ball travels. Uh, you wake up, your body's not feeling right. Match gets moved, something happens, your draw stinks. There's so much that's out of your, your control. I, th I think if you can really figure out a way to compartmentalize and focus on what you actually have control over, which is basically the day in, day out monotony of practice and showing up and eating two hours before you do, you know, the little things. Uh, that kind of maybe don't show uh, kind of the results right away, but it's like long term. We're six years down the road, your body's in better shape because you've been eating well for six years. I think those are the things that are, that are probably important. Well, very cool. Well, Andy, uh, appreciate you taking the time, and truly, it's really been a pleasure sitting down talking. I appreciate to you. you. Thank, Thank you. you for your Thanks, time, brother. Thank you.